Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Robert Kaufman Fabrics, quality fabrics for quilting. Sulky, express yourself with Sulky and create with confidence. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people. Hello, I'm Jolie Heinz-Sayasan. I'm an editor for Quilters Newsletter Magazine. And today, my guest of honor is Linda Beach, who is an artist at, from Estes Park, or most recently from Estes Park, Colorado. And today, we are gonna be talking about um, her artist in residence programs that she has been a participant of. And I am unfamiliar with how artists in residence programs work. So could you sort of talk us through how that initially gets started and then what you've been doing. Sure, and thank you for having me here today. Um, I've done four artists in residencies through our national park system and uh, it's a fabulous program because when you think about it, artists were instrumental in creating our national parks. Um, back when uh, the first parks were created, it was artists um, who did the beautiful western landscapes and brought them to the attention of the public. So in recent years, the National Park Service has instigated this program where uh, they have artisan residencies that are at most of our national parks. They're all slightly different depending on the location mm -hmm. and what's available at that particular park. But they're all similar in the fact that it's a bid process. You put forth a proposal. Uh, there is a jury who will look at your work. Mm -hmm. The park provides housing for you, and oh. your stay could be anywhere from a week to three weeks. You could be staying in a remote cabin, or you could be staying at an apartment building or some other facility. Uh, they allow you the time to be creative, to spend your time in the park however you want to do it. Uh, the only thing they ask in return is that you give public programs while you're there. Oh, okay. Um, sometimes several, usually about one a week if it's a multi-week stay. And sometime after your stay, you give them a piece of artwork uh, within one year of your stay. So you have plenty of time to prepare something that was inspired by your stay and you donate that to the park. And they use it as part of their program and outreach into the visitors, display it at museums or various public buildings. So really it's a wonderful program. It sounds really fascinating. And then do you, when you submit as part of your proposal, you submit photographs or previous works or just sketches? All of the how, above. All of the above? Yeah, it just mm -hmm. depends. Uh, the program is open to writers. They would submit, you know, examples of the work. It's open to poets, oh my visual goodness. artists, musicians. Um, in my case, of course, I submitted uh, images of my work and my intent, what I hope to accomplish. And I've been lucky enough to have been chosen over the years uh, for four different residencies. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I've been at Denali National Park in Alaska, um, Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado, uh, Acadia National Park on the coast of Maine, and most recently this last fall at Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. Oh my goodness. So, so um, and obviously we have one of your quotes behind us, mm -hmm. um, and I believe this is Tenacity. Yes, that was inspired um, during my stay at Acadia National Park in Maine. I had three mm -hmm. weeks there, uh, and you're right on the course, coast, so it's a beautiful location. And mm -hmm. when I go to these residencies, um, I don't bring my sewing machine or really do any type of sewing work there, but what I like to do is uh, spend my time hiking. I, I love the outdoors and most of my work is based on nature. So I spend my time hiking, taking photographs, making sketches, and this is something I saw on one of the hikes. Uh, what really mm -hmm. struck me about Acadia was all the beautiful pink granite everywhere mm -hmm. and these trees that are just seemingly grow out of solid rock. Right, it's it's really beautiful. Well, thank you. Very lovely. Thank you very so. much. And then um, you mentioned Denali. Yes, mm -hmm. um, Denali was my first uh, residency that I did, and they give you ten days at a very remote cabin uh, within the park. Uh, you're forty miles within the park, mm -hmm. and so when the buses quit running for the day because they don't allow private vehicles, you are truly alone in the park. Oh my um, goodness! There was no running water, no electricity. Uh, but you have propane heat and water's brought to you and it's really very comfortable, cozy cabin. And, and, you're, and you're alone there? I was allowed to bring someone. So many okay. of these residencies you're allowed to bring someone. I bring my husband with me so I have a hiking companion. And uh, in nice. that case we were visited by a mother grizzly and her three cubs while we were at the cabin. So 
I was glad to have the companion right. one morning. Cause, <laughs> like, uh, honey, go check on that noise for me. <laughs> yes, well, we were sitting down to breakfast our last day, having some cinnamon rolls, and all of a sudden the cabin started shaking. And I thought it was an earthquake, because we just recently had a very severe one up there. Um, but then I remembered reading in the cabin log about how these bear cubs love to get on the porch and play with the doormat, and love to scratch their backs up against the cabin corners. And so immediately I was thinking, bear. Uh, so I hurried and slammed the door shut because we'd had the door, it's like a triple door system there with crossbars and protruding nails just to keep the animals keep. out. And uh, we had been a little careless about closing the door, so I immediately slammed it shut. We looked out the window and sure enough, there was a mother grizzly peering back in at us with her cubs. Oh my uh, goodness. So, but luckily she ambled on away and we didn't see her anymore. So. I would have been very glad of that. <laughs> so. But aside from the bears, what really um, interested me about Denali um, was these immense gravel bars. Oh. They've got a lot of huge river systems that are glacial moraines. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a photo that I took uh, that was the inspiration of the quilt that I eventually made and donated to the park for display there at their visitor wow. center. That is just beautiful. So yeah. how do you, obviously having this sort of inspiration, how do you decide or narrow down to what you are going to actually end up with. I mean, there must be so many choices that how would you make a decision in, in terms of lighting or color or just that the process has spoken to you or the, I mean, how do you decide? It must be overwhelming sometimes. Well, it's, it's more of what catches my eye and luckily because of, like I said, there are so many overwhelming choices, but there was only really one that spoke to me as my donation to the park, mm -hmm. but What's wonderful and why I love doing these programs is that the inspiration it gives you, I can carry on to my own work. And I did actually probably get maybe six or eight more quilts that were very specific to my oh. time in the park. Um, but just for the one to pick to donate to them, mm -hmm. um, it was easy because just the immense views and like I said, miles and miles of the glacial moraines. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it was an easy choice. That's good. I imagine it, wouldn't, it would not be easy in the sense of deciding, but as you said, to have so much extra material to work with afterwards would be really exciting, well, I think. Well, so. that's why I think it's such a wonderful program because as an artist, you get so much more out of it than you give, at least for me, because just having that time to focus on your work without any distractions, um, it just results in so much creativity for future projects. And wonderful, and how long were you in Denali? For about 10 days there Just the at the 10 cabin, days. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, they all vary in length. Uh, when I was at Acadia in Maine, it was three weeks. Um, the most recent residency I did at uh, Mesa Verde National Park, it was mm -hmm. two weeks. Oh, I see. And that was a really wonderful experience because uh, when you're the artist in residence at Mesa Verde, they give you a very traditional Hogan to stay in. I'm sorry, a what? A Hogan, it's uh, a native Navajo dwelling it's uh, sort of, uh, I believe it's an octagon shape. There's a very traditional shape to it. The okay. doorway should be facing east to greet the morning sun. And the walls are very thick. Uh, so oh. you remains cool even with the heat of the high desert. And just a very mm -hmm. interesting, wonderful place to stay and absorb uh, the atmosphere of Mesa Verde. Right. And so then you obviously took the same sorts of steps. You took photographs and hiked. I did and a lot of hiking. Did, went through the national park. Mm -hmm. Just you're very lucky, and when you're at Mesa Verde, um, is that you know s the feature of the park naturally are the uh, ancient dwellings and the ruins. You're given keys to that area. Oh wow! So you're able to go and spend time at these special places. Uh, after the visitors have gone for the day, you can go to uh, backcountry areas and sit and have time to contemplate and uh, take your photos and take your time and sketch or do whatever you would like to do. And mm -hmm. when I was at Mesa Verde, of course, I spent all my time hiking again, but this was a photo oh I goodness. took on one of the hikes that ended up being the inspiration for the piece that I did. Wow. And what you're looking at here is this blurriness in the foreground is the wall of a ruin. The hole is where the um, roof beam support went through the wall. Of course, it's long since uh, disappeared over time. But you're looking through the hole of where the roof beam support was mm -hmm. at additional ruins in the background. My goodness. So this is the photo that I decided to base my work upon. 
And then on that same hike, I also, uh, we passed a wall, my husband and I, of different petroglyphs. Oh, my goodness. Um, Just etched right into the, carved right into the rock? Right. And uh, the designs really intrigued me, so I thought, well, I'll take photos of these because I think these could make fabulous quilt designs on a future mm -hmm. quilt. And there's a lot of great empty space around the focal point. I thought I'd incorporate these. Mm -hmm. So this is the design, the sketch that I ended up working from. Um, and you can see behind me there is the finished piece. Uh, of course, there's a little artistic license in uh, the dwelling that you see right. and some of the colors. But uh, I do a piecing technique. So I work from a pattern that I draw here. I'm making freezer paper templates and sewing each of these pieces together and constructing it um, in the same way that you would a very traditional quilt. So none of this is applique, none, none of your work? I never do applique, no. All my work is piecing. Oh my goodness. That added that extra challenge into getting not just the look you want, but being able to achieve that within the, within the structure of the piecing and the, and it's not foundation pieced. No, no. Okay. I'm working from separate freezer paper templates traced off of a drawing like this. But to me, wow. that's part of the fun is the challenge of piecing, how it uh, dictates your line and your composition. So mm -hmm. I enjoy that. Oh, it's very, it's just so interesting to see from the photo to the sketch that you did and to the finished piece of work is just amazing. And this is yours? The, I mean, this is your particular one or this is the for the residency? This is going to be for Mesa Verde National Park. Uh, I will be sending it off to them shortly. And this wow. will be the piece that I will donate to the, them. That they will have hanging. And then where will they will they have it? Within the visitor center or a special I'm not area? sure. It's up to each park. You know, they're all slightly different. Uh, like I said, some will hang at the visitor center. Some have a program where it's on display or they may uh, sell it after a period of time mm -hmm. and uh, split the money between the artists and the park. Some hang it in administrative offices. I mean, like I said, it all varies depending on each particular park's needs and mm -hmm. space they have. Well, it's all, it's all fascinating. Thank you very much for coming in and explaining the process of artist in residence and obviously showing us your wonderful inspiration and quilts. And um, I should also mention that um, Linda is our meeting place artist featured in our June-July issue of Quilters Newsletter magazine. So you'll want to pick up a copy of that and see more of her wonderful quilts. And also please go online to quiltersnewsletter.com where you can see a gallery slideshow of even more of Linda's work. Thank you very much, Linda. Thank you very much for having me today. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Robert Kaufman Fabrics, quality fabrics for quilting. Sulky, express yourself with Sulky and create with confidence. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people. <laughs>